as you can see from the title, I'll be making, uh, at least attempting to make, a uh, more streamlined interface for Dish. This is really useful, as is a, uh, it's really useful, it depends on your use case, but I really enjoy it. So you have a Dish is an interface, which lets you allow, which allows you to adjust the different volumes for your PC, like your microphone, your games and everything like that, uh, with a hardware interface. So like you're in game, you can adjust your Discord, your uh, game volume, your system volume, which I find it quite helpful. But I didn't want to have, since I want to control a lot of inputs, I usually use my voice meter, which is quite big. I didn't want to limit myself to the number of potentiometers I had or to build like a huge DJ like console. So I'll be making one with rotary encoders. There are some guys that build it with rotary encoders, but they just use one rotary encoders for one input. So the difference is just the type of input, but the result is the same, except they usually include like a click function to mute the input, but it's kind of the same as this one. I don't know if I can really do it, but I'll try. So the main difference between my version and this version will be that it will run some custom firmware on the Arduino side. I'll be using an ESP32 and I have to program all that. And also, instead of having multiple potentiometers, I'll have two rotary encoders, one to adjust the volume and one to loop through the inputs. So instead of like five, I will have two which one controls the volume and the others switch, switches between the inputs. So it would be like uh, simulating having uh, an X number of uh, inputs as I can have uh, basically infinite of them and just look through them. To make it a little bit easier to understand, I will add a screen to, that shows you the current volume and the input you're in because uh, rotary encoders don't really end or start like potentiometers do, they uh, spin freely in either direction and it would be really confusing to try and adjust it by ear. So yeah, I'll skip to the build part. So the first step into getting this to work is to see if I can actually get it to work with rotary encoders, as this usually works with um, potentiometers like this, would have um, variable resistance in it and when you turn it, the voltage, if you provide a voltage, the voltage out will be different as will be different as there is a different resistance going through it. So uh, instead I wanted to use something more advanced, which is a rotary encoder, which basically sends a pulse every time this turn. So you can tell if this turned left or right. And by that you can gain a full 360 view of the rotary encoder and this turns as long as I want. And also this, this one also has a click function, which will be quite useful. So to test if this really works, right now I'm only using this one. This one I set it up for later. I have an Arduino code that interprets the rotary encoder, like this one. And when I turn it, it should, at least in theory, uh, display uh, a volume which goes from zero to 1023, which is the range of the analog pin in the Arduino. So if you check the serial monitor, this is what DJ expects. So right now I'm going for a five uh, potentiometers, they're not really potentiometers, they're the equivalent of a potentiometer. And as you can see, it goes, you can see the first one changing. And right now it's at zero, and if I give it a one, one click, it's at 10, 20, 30, 40, I have some values for, you can see some like, oh, the value changed, but that's just for debugging. And so this goes all the way up to uh, 1032, you have, you have to believe me on that. And then the most important part, because I don't want to have five different uh, rotary encoders for this, I just want a clean setup. I can change like between my apps with this one and then uh, change the actual volume of the app with this one but right now I'm just debugging so if I click on it it should switch to the second position so as you can see now I'm changing the second virtual potenti potentiometer so as you can see yeah it's, it works so here's what I've done I went ahead now that I know that this works I went ahead and 
uh, implemented the second potentiometer and the display. I just received this in the mail. So this one uh, still controls the volume as before, but if I click it, it doesn't actually switch between the different potentiometer. This is this one uh, job. So this one loops between one through five. So if I turn it, it goes from one to five and then back again to one. So I can loop between my inputs or outputs or apps or whatever I want. It doesn't, it isn't limited to five. It can go to whatever I want. That's the good part. And since with the normal dish setup, you need one potentiometer for each uh, input or app or anything you want to control. While on this one, I can loop between infinite of them. I don't know if I really need infinite, but <laughs> it's good to know. And this one, so still goes for volume and this one loops around, as I said. But now I actually have like a display that shows the slider that I'm in. I don't know if you can really read it, but and then it has like the volume bar. And what I've went ahead and did is, as you can see, this goes up and the click doesn't switch between the sliders. As I said, this one does, so the slider two, three, five, and then back again at one. And this click actually mutes the current uh, slider, but I didn't really want to just set it to zero and then have to turn it up again. So if I click it again, it goes back to the uh, value that it was before I muted, that it's good. And if I turn it up, it, and first when I wrote the code, it just went uh, up, yeah, it went up from zero, and that's not really what I wanted to do. So if I turn it, yep, it goes first on mutes and then turns the volume up or down. So this is quite useful as I can do this, mute it, and then if I want to turn it on, I can just turn it like this and it will resume from the last one. So now I just have to implement the logic that actually saves the volume because I don't want them to start from like 50 or zero every time I reboot the computer or else I have to manually adjust them every time. But I could stop here, so I could just implement that and uh, have real names instead of slider ones. I thought maybe make the UI a little bit cooler. But there is a reason why I'm using an ESP32, and it's because I wanted to make this device not only for myself, because I can easily edit the Arduino code and insert whatever I want. But that's not who I'm making it for. I since I already have like a alpha version of this, which is my this is working with potentiometers, it's not actually working with DIG as I have the uh, voice meter in my computer so I can actually I'll show you. Uh, this one is an Arduino just sends a MIDI input and then it, uh, it can actually adjust every uh, input that I want. But I wanted to make this for my friends as well so it should be really easy to use as they're not really as tech savvy as I am. I mean, I can show them, but then it would be really, really boring to teach them all how to use Arduino. So this is where we're at right now. I've uh, cleaned up the UI. Now it actually has like one out of three and you can still switch between tabs as you did before. You have the volume uh, bar. It has an, um, it doesn't really show well on camera. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Oh, maybe the screen is just dirty. Okay, so where it is? You can kind of see it. Okay, so as you can see, it says 66. It's a percentage, so it goes from zero to 100%. And it's not showing the actual like 1023 value. It's way easier to understand, in my opinion, as a percentage. Uh, you can mute it as you did before, mute it and unmute it, and it remembers the last uh, value. So if you mute it and like turn it down, it still remembers the last value. It now saves everything to flash because uh, if you reboot it, you don't want to set all your volumes again. So it now does that. And in order to save the flash memory, since it has a limited number of writes and reads, like like an SD card, if you do it too many times, if you run an OS on it, it's gonna break eventually and we want to make the breaking point as long as possible. So it registered every change. So when you change something, 
it sets a timer for 10 seconds and if there is any change in that 10 seconds it restarts the timer so if you like turn the volume up one step at a time it doesn't actually write the value every time it will be really intensive on the flash chip instead it waits for the full 10 seconds after the last input to actually write it down so basically this is what it does and I wanted to have an easy way to change the menus, so main, system, and example, like I said it right now. And in order to do that, I uh, you have to connect it to Wi-Fi, so it has a setup. If it doesn't, uh, it's, if nothing is stored on the ESP32 memory, it should open. No, it should. It actually opens a, a Wi-Fi network. You can connect to it. Uh, go to 192.168.4.1, not this one, this one is for my Wi-Fi, and it actually shows this exact page, so you can scan for networks. It will take a while since the ESP is uh, looping through the networks to see if it's finding anything that it can connect to. Yeah, as you can see, there are my networks, I won't show this part, but... And yeah, so you connect to a network and it actually does that by default every time you reboot it. And if there is some problem with the connection, like, uh, I don't know, uh, you change place, there is no need to reset the SP32, just uh, it tries to connect five times, it will say actually the attempt number in the display. And after five times, it, actually, it uh, goes to the same... Uh, and setting up procedure as, as as if it doesn't save any Wi-Fi, so it, it will open a Wi-Fi network and you can connect to it and open this page. And in order to customize the menus, as uh, I didn't want the code to be changed every time because I want this, I want to give this to my friend, and I don't know if they can actually do this stuff. So uh, you you have a JSON file. I will have probably a tool that can help you through creating it and okay wait, I'll show you it's here and it's really easy it says the number of sliders which are I set to three and then I define the sliders so it has a name a value uh, if it's muted or not and the previous value this three stuff you can just leave it as is and change it on the device as it will be overwritten once the device actually saves so don't worry about this the main the important part is the name and the order if you care about it so if, for example if i change this to my microphone this doesn't actually change anything for dig the program is still zero one two but it changes on the display here so it's good to have so you can save it and then using the ip of your device, go to upload slider configuration, uh, select file, and you can select it. It will reboot the device to apply the configuration. I will have to blur, yeah, see, it's connecting to my Wi Fi. It will show the IP, it does this every time. Uh, since, I mean, if you connect it to your computer, it will still take your computer five seconds to boot, so it's good to have your IP known and then yeah so now it's updated so you have main and if I go back I have microphone system and main okay so this is basically what I've done uh, you can configure it with uh, as if it was just a normal system I would set the noise reduction to low as uh, there isn't actually any noise uh, I handled it in the in my code just set the correct baud rate, the correct COM port, and yeah, you can map it to wherever you want, just as a normal device. I will show you it working because... I really so you have to open Dig, uh, normal, like as we do normally, and then, as you can see from my mixer, if I am on main, I can easily adjust it. As you can see, it's changing. Then I can switch to like system, which is my system sounds, and I can turn that down. It's good to have that down since the pop up are really annoying. Okay, yep, yeah, so it's working. Right now, there are a couple bugs. As you can see, the percentage, it's not the same as the system because it's doing a double approximation. So my software is converting 0 to 100 to 0 to 1023, and DJ on the 
computer side is doing the same thing. So it has a little bit of error <laughs> of like 1%. So it's, it usually is 1% more than it actually is, except at 100%, which is 100% in both cases. Yeah, so I will upload all my code on uh, GitHub. I still have to do a lot of stuff since it's really like a, an alpha version. As you can see, like the interface is very, very ugly. <laughs> and also it doesn't have an, ex an uh, enclosure. I will probably 3D print something for that. I have a 3D printer and I will upload the files. If you have like the same ESP32, the same uh, uh, rotary encoders and display, I will link all my stuff in the description of the video, no worries, and in the GitHub page. But yeah, it works, so it could be, I could use it with this right now, I want, because I have my little MIDI box, since I actually don't need it, I'm building this for my friends. But uh, Yeah, so in the next uh, weeks, probably, since I have a couple exams for school, I will upload the uh, part two. I still haven't filmed it or built it, but it will probably have like an enclosure and a couple better, like at least soldered wiring, not breadboard stuff. And uh, it will include some better interface if I can do it. I'm planning on switching, this is an ESP32, uh, the standard one, and it has four megabytes of flash memory and I have in the mail coming the ESP32 S3 which has I think either 16 megabytes of memory or 8 so it's like it will allow me to have way better stuff but yeah I don't know if I'm gonna do that soon but and everything is open source so if you have some issues if you want to fork my stuff if you want to contribute to it just open the GitHub page and have fun. If you want to build this yourself, it's really easy. Uh, you can edit the code, you can tweak some stuff, but uh, I don't think it warrants a build video since it's really like normal connections to the ESP32. If you want, I'll show you like real quick how it's my setup. You can probably decipher it. <laughs> I'll maybe upload a schematic if I have the time. But if you know what you're doing, it's quite easy to understand what is going on here. With this being said, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, when I upload that, I don't really know. It might be like an Italian video for fishing or a random stuff that I'm doing. I don't really know what to do with this channel, but this is what I'm doing right now. So see you.